Good day everyone, and welcome to Lubrication Explained. Today we're going to be talking about a class of additives called detergents. Very common additive, especially in engine oils, and it's really important to understand how they work. So one of the many functions of a lubricant is actually its keep clean performance. You'll see this a lot on some of the product data sheets. Um, and in many applications, particularly with engines, uh, what the lubricants need to do is actually remove some undesirable byproducts and contaminants and take them to the oil filters where they can be removed from the system. So we do this in one of two ways. The first way is just to prevent uh, contamination and prevent the formation of undesirable chemical species in the first place. Now we'll get into more detail in future videos about base oil oxidation and antioxidant additives but ultimately what happens is is that the base oil virtually cooks in service right and so you get the formation of all these unwanted chemical species mostly they're organic acids and they can actually precipitate further oxidation so you kind of get this snowball effect which ages the oil prematurely and it can raise the corrosive potential of the oil so we don't want that using a combination of high quality base stocks and a good antioxidant package can help prevent that from occurring in the first place. But eventually, some kind of degradation of the oil is inevitable. It will happen over time. And what we do then is we use detergents and dispersants to clean up those uh, components and remove them from the oil. Today, we're going to be talking specifically about detergents. So detergents and dispersants work in very similar ways, and in some ways they have similar chemical structures, but we're going to focus on detergents today. So how do detergents work? The easiest way of thinking about it is just like household detergents. So you probably use these in the washing machine, or to wash your car, or to wash your hands, right? So we use detergents everywhere. And the actual kind of detergent itself is what we call a surface acting agent. Uh, in short, we generally call them surfactants, right? So surfactants are um, what uh, helps us do the cleaning. Okay, so imagine that you've had a plate of food. Okay, you've eaten your meal, you clear your plates, what's left is the plate, and you are going to plunge it into a kind of a bowl of soapy water, or you're going to put it in the dishwasher. What's actually happy, happening at the kind of micro scale? Well, what's happening is that we have a volume of water that you've put your, uh, your dish into, right? And there might be, let's say, a little bit of grease that's left over from your food. So in order to remove this grease from the plate and from the bulk of the oil, we need some kind of chemical structure that can be attracted to the grease, but isn't attracted to any of the water. So we need something that is attracted to grease, but not the water, or attracted to oil, but not the water. So how do we do that? Well, let's consider the way that uh, water is structured, because this will help us understand the sort of the attraction of, of both water and oil, and why the two actually don't mix. So with water, we've got two hydrogens and an oxygen. I think everyone should be reasonably familiar with this structure. And within this kind of uh, molecule, what we have is bonds between the hydrogens and the oxygens. Now, what those bonds are is actually a shared electron pair, right? But different, uh, different molecules have different what we call electronegativity values. And as it happens, oxygen is a little bit more electronegative than hydrogen. And so it kind of has the greater share of the electrons. And that gives the oxygen in this case, kind of a, a net uh, a negative charge and the hydrogens a net positive charge. And this means that there's overall, when you look at the structure of the atom, sorry, the structure of the molecule, there's actually a net negative dipole. Now we consider an oil molecule. So in this case, I've got pentane, but um, you could imagine most oil molecules are going to be longer chains. What you see here is we've got hydrogens and carbons. And if we were to zoom in, that hydrogen to carbon bond is a shared electron pair where the carbon and hydrogen have very similar 
electronegativity values. So it's not really shared by the carbon or more shared by the hydrogen. It, the electron pair is actually sort of equally shared between the car carbon and the hydrogen. Moreover, the actual structure of the overall molecule is relatively symmetrical. So there's no real overall dipole, dipole moment um, across the oil molecule. Um, as a result, water and oil kind of sit in two different classes. So we call oil non-polar because it has no overall uh, electric dipole, whereas water is polar. So it has a net dipole on it. And it's for this reason that oil and water don't actually mix, right? Because like mixes with like. Now, detergents are a special type of molecule which have a polar head. So polar is just like water, and that makes the head hydrophilic. Hydrophilic coming from Latin uh, and Greek, meaning, you know, at attracted to water. Hydrophobic is the non-polar tail. So it has this long uh, polymer tail, which is non-polar, and therefore not attracted to water, but is attracted to oil. All right, so let's go back to our bucket of water. Our bucket of water now has a whole bunch of detergent molecules in it. So if we were to introduce our plate uh, with you know, a little bit of grease on it, what's gonna happen is that all these detergent molecules or surfactants are gonna be attracted. Remember the non-polar tail is going to be attracted to the non-polar oil and the polar head is going to be continue to attract to the polar water. That then enables us to take our sponge and easily remove uh, that oil or that grease from the plate. Now in lubricants, we kind of have the reverse scenario. So instead of um, the volume being mostly water, the volume actually is, is actually mostly oil and lies as before, we have a whole bunch of detergent additives in this case within the bulk lubricant. Now what happens is the reverse occurs. So instead of, of a plate of oil, what we instead have is an oxidation byproduct. So when oil oxidizes, the byproducts are actually polar. So they're kind of similar in chemical uh, dipole moment to water. And as a result, the detergents are also going to attract but they're going to do it in the reverse way. So before, if you'll remember, the tails were attracted uh, to the contaminant, whereas in this case, the, the polar head is attracted to the contaminant. And again, this enables us to remove that contaminant from the lubricant. So that's a really quick primer on how detergents work in lubricants. I hope that was really helpful for you. We'll go into more detail in future videos, but this has been Lubrication Explained.